energizers. So we have a plug-in unit here, not a real big one. Uh, and we also have our lightning diverter here. On uh, your typical energizer, your power source, this is a plug-in power unit. Typically, they're the most reliable. They're also the most cost-effective units. And there's two terminals on here. The green one usually is for your ground, going to our ground rods, and then our insulated one going out to our fence. Energized fencers, plug-in models, the kind 110 or 220 volt systems that plug into your normal uh, electrical outlet are probably the most reliable. We get a lot of questions on solar units. People are always interested in solar units. Essentially what a solar unit is, it's a battery unit with a solar panel. The solar panel functions as a trickle charger. Um, they can be very effective in remote situations, but in northern climates where we have a lot of cloudy days late into the fall and early winter, the daylight is very short, plus the temperatures are colder, they tend not to perform as well. Uh, any battery powered unit, just like the battery in your car or in your pickup truck, tends to lose um, storage amps when the temperatures get gets cold. We have the same problem on electric fences. So something to keep in mind uh, on a remote situation that you might only be grazing during the summer months. Often a battery powered unit is adequate for most people. If you're using a battery powered unit, we strongly recommend a deep cycle type marine battery. What a lot of folks will do is they'll have two deep cycle marine batteries. They already have a battery charger back in the shop on the farm. They'll just rotate those batteries on a regular schedule. Uh, the most common recommendation is about once every three weeks. If there's not a lot of vegetative load on the fence, you can go out four, sometimes five weeks, but don't stretch it too far where you start to have animals violating that. Better to keep that battery charged and in good operating condition uh, in that sort of a setup. Most manufacturers have recommendations on how big of an area their energizer will, will cover. And there's many examples of that. What I typically recommend is if, for example, you're grazing a 160 acre piece and they recommend a certain size energizer, round it up to the next size up. Energizers are usually ranked in joule rating. That's the amount of stored energy um, available from that energizer. Take it to the next joule size that's up and you're usually good to go. Try not to overpower them. We can see some problems with overpowering energizers. Uh, if you have a fence that goes near a metal building or if you have a metal pipe gate somewhere, uh, we can see voltage literally jumping across uh, and energizing that. So somebody who comes to open a gate on say a foggy or dewy morning or open a door on a metal building could receive a shock in that situation. And if we're in a dairy situation, uh, and we've got a milking parlor and we're concerned about voltage considerations there, which dairy cattle are very sensitive to. We want to be cognizant of that and not overpower our fence and create any problems. In general on energizers, you tend to get what you pay for, um, although there are some U.S. manufacturers that are coming out with better models now, although a lot of them now are throwaway uh, disposable type units. The ability to repair some of these is getting less over time. Some of the more expensive ones are modular type construction and different modules of that can be replaced or repair, repaired as necessary. Now we've stuck a lightning diverter in here in order to protect this from any lightning surge uh, off of a lightning strike uh, out or near the fence. Lightning protection is very important. You go out and drop four, five, six hundred dollars on an energizer. It's like buying any other quality appliance. Uh, most manufacturers of quality appliance recommend lightning protection. On a fencer that's plugging in uh, to an outlet system, we need lightning protection both on the fence side and on the utility side. On the utility side, there are small surge protector single outlet plugs you can get for under $10 uh, that can protect you just like they'd protect any appliance in your home from an electrical surge on the utility side of the fence. From the energized fence side of things, there are a number of, of um, Lightning diverters available, two of the most common are the twin tower porcelain diverters and then the adjustable diverters. The twin tower porcelain diverters are set up to basically take one lightning hit and they're done. There's a plate in between the, tin, the, two, the two towers on the lightning diverter and the lightning surge um, 
Well, if it's set up correctly, in theory, is supposed to uh, arc through that and send it to the ground. The idea on lightning protection is lightning likes to seek the shortest path to the best possible ground. And if that best possible ground is through that energizer and then into the ground rods, it's going to take that path. The idea with a lightning diverter is, they ha is that we would have a better ground than on the utility and a shorter ground, and the shorter meaning it's going through the surge protector instead of through the energizer to that better quality ground. In theory, the lightning's supposed to pursue that and, and go that direction. And so we wanna make sure we do a good job of setting that up and building that into the system. When we put all this wire out here in a situation, particularly if we're crossing hills, we're putting out a great big antenna. So it's gonna attract electrical charges in the air. I've seen uh, where we don't even have to have a direct strike on lightning and we can get damaged to energizers if they're not protected just through um, the voltage from a lightning bolt going through the air. It can happen. This is an adjustable unit. This is designed to take multiple hits. Um, follow your energized fence manufacturer's recommendations for installing and setting this because it does require some fine tuning. But if you're spending $400 or $300 on an energized fencer, um, that can be $25 well spent on protecting that energizer from multiple hits.